All right, first of the 4 o'clock games, the Raiders at the Jags. Uh, this will be ugly, low scoring. I'm going to take Jacksonville just because I trust their defense a little more. Uh, the Raiders' the Raiders game planning last week was awful, first of all. Josh like, McDaniels, what a smart guy. Yeah, and Jacksonville's pass rush has actually done, done pretty well. And even Tyson Campbell has been very underrated this year. He's had a nice year his second year. So I think he'll be able to, not contain, but at least limit Devontae Adams a little more. And Jacksonville can stop the run. So I'll take Jacksonville 20 to 13. Yeah, Lance. I'll uh, I'll piggyback off you on that one just because quadruple F the Raiders. I'm a Broncos fan, and I can never pick the Raiders to actually do anything <laughs> good other than fail. And it's such a poetic justice to me to watch them fail with Josh McDaniels as their head coach. If you know anything <laughs> about the Broncos' history and Josh McDaniels, you know why I want the Jacksonville Jaguars to win this game. They can't stop the run. They can't stop the pass. Travis Etienne just torched the Broncos for 154 yards, 156 yards, something like that, and a touchdown against the Broncos last week. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go for at least that against this Raiders defense. It's absolute dog trash, terrible. Give me the give me the Jags, 23 to 10. Hmm. All right, Clay, we got the Raiders at the Jags. Yeah, I'm taking Jacksonville, and I, it felt like last week things might be starting to get away, might be starting to get late early out in Las Vegas. I. I would it surprise you guys, you know, all this talk about Nathaniel Hackett, would it surprise you guys if Josh McDaniels was the first head coach fired of the new, the new group <laughs> this year? I mean, it's getting to that point where it feels like you like you can just sense that it's not right and players start to understand that it's not right. I could see this one getting away really quickly. Uh, he'll go back to the Patriots. <laughs> yeah. so join the great offensive staff. It'll be their defensive coordinator. This <laughs> yeah, it'll be a whole role reversal. That's how it works. Yep, Matt Patricia, offensive coordinator. Joe Judge, offensive coordinator. And <laughs> it'll be a defensive coordinator. Oh man! And Bill maybe Belichick. Steve Belichick will be promoted to some other role that doesn't exist. I was going to say, watch watch Bill Belichick just get promoted to straight up uh, GM and Josh McDaniels. Oh my god! Head coach this there. this organization, man. I, I and they still find a way to win. It doesn't make any sense. It makes me throw up as a Jet fan. Okay. Uh, anyways. Um, I got the Raiders in this game. I, I think the Raiders win this game. I, they need to win this game because if they don't win this game, Josh McDaniels is on a hot seat. I, I don't know what's going on with this team. Waller, yeah, Waller's healthy now. Renfro's he's out now, so you lost Renfro. I, 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 is Renfro playing this week? I don't know. Not I think, sure yet. I, 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 I think so. I, I'm not sure. I think he got hurt last week. I don't know he, if he's he playing. Play, he came back from injury last week. It was mm. his first game back. But All right. Still limited in practice um, this week. I, Adams, Adams is in the game. I, I think they'll be able to run the ball with Jacobs. Jaguars this year has had problems stopping the run. They they have. And uh, Jacobs, to me, is, is going to be a hot ticket in the offseason. A lot of teams will be interested in him. I think he's a very underrated running back and one of the better running backs in the NFL. I think the Raiders will pull out this game. I don't know. I really should go with the Jaguars because this could be a really bad week for me. But I'm going to go with the Raiders. So give me the Raiders in this game. It will be close. 21-20. All right. <laughs> Seattle Seahawks at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I, this is going to be a game of field goals. Both these teams have had trouble with their red zone offenses. Both these kickers have been pretty steady in, as a result. But I'm going to take the Cardinals in this, mainly because I think they're you second. You keep picking the Cardinals. What is up with you? Because they they lose the games they're supposed to win and vice versa. Has anybody watched the hard knocks? I don't think anybody's checked out the hard knocks of uh, the Arizona. Why would you want to watch that garbage? I mean, what's going on with that team? But I do think, but I do think, in to an extent, they have done well in the secondary in terms of taking out number one receivers. So I, I think that's going to be a big adjustment for Geno Smith to have to make to, when they take out one of Metcalf or Lockett, Brian Murphy, Buda Baker. I think they've all played well this year. Kenneth Walker will get his; he'll be able to run. But I do think the Cardinals could take some concepts of what the Giants did because they have a similar defense. So I'm going to take the Cardinals at home. This is a must win for them too. Twenty three to twenty. Give me the more consistent quarterback. And the more consistent quarterback is Geno Smith right now. Kyler Murray has not been playing very well at all over the last several weeks. The Seattle Seahawks defense has been playing incredibly well over the course of the season. I, look at what the NFL just did. They named uh, Geno Smith the Offensive Player of the Month. They named Tariq Woolen the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Month. The, and Kenneth Walker the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Month. This team is playing incredibly inspired football, despite the fact that everyone was crapping on them to be a top five pick. They're five and two right now, I believe, is what their record is. And, five and three, they're yep. going up against a Cardinals team that 
cannot figure out a way to find their like get out of their own way offensively. So give me the more consistent quarterback. Give me the defense that's playing better. Tariq Woolen with another interception this week. Give me the Cardinals uh, 24 to 16 over the Cardinals. Uh, give me the Seahawks, excuse me, 24 16 over gotcha. the Cardinals. Gotcha. All right, Clay. Seattle at Arizona. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's it, one team is doing everything right. The other team is doing everything wrong. And, man, is there a better story in the NFL than Geno Smith this year? And, and we're, no. he, he went to Miramar High School down here. It's incredible that this is the same player that we saw a few years ago and had been discarded. Man, I, I'm just so happy for him. And it's such a it's such an emo, uh, an inspirational story of a guy who everybody had written off. And if you watch him week after week, this is not a oh man magical like things are going right for him. No, he's making ridiculous throws. He's doing he's like doing the things that you don't do that get you beat. He's not doing the things that you don't do to get you beat. And then when he has to make a play, he finds a way to make a play. So I'm 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 believing in the in the Seattle Seahawks right now. I'm taking them on the road. Um, I got Seattle in this game too. I, I think who's going to stop Kenneth Kenneth Walker right now? I, I mean, he has been the dominant force running back in the NFL. There's nobody every single week, week by week. This guy's been trampling off all over everybody. I, I who's stopping him on the Cardinals defense? Uh, JJ Watt. Give me a break. I mean, he's a washed-up uh, defensive lineman. I, I don't know what's going on with this team. Uh, the Cardinals, Kyler Murray, who I've been a fan of, I, I'm losing respect for him. I, I think he thinks he's better than everybody else, and uh, he got that contract in the offseason. I think he looks like an absolute fool. Kingsbury should be fired after he got that extension, so he'll be there for at least another year. Give me the Seahawks and Geno Smith, 31-20. All right, the L.A. Rams at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Basically, the season's on the line for both these teams, probably. Uh, I'm going to take the Rams in this one. They've Isn't had... this fitting? Isn't this fitting? <laughs> this is funny. The, the, these two teams, absolute disgrace. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to take the Rams, though, for, for two reasons, one of which is Tampa just lost Shaq Barrett for the year, so I think they're going to have a lot of trouble trying to make shift a pass rush as it is. Joe Tryon, who's pretty good as a young player, is going to have to be their number one guy, so I don't know if they could take advantage of the Rams' offensive line, and I don't trust Todd Bowles with the game planning either against this Rams team that's carved him up with Sean McVay. They'll have a hard time running the ball, the Rams, but I do think they'll be able to spread the roll, ball around. Tampa's secondary hasn't looked look good the last couple of weeks, so I'm going to take the Rams in this one 27-17. Is there any game this season that was like more hyped up than Rams and Buccaneers with like the the last two uh, Super Bowl champions? Mm-hmm. Everyone thought that this was going to be a great game and it's going to be a slot fest. Neither one of these offenses can move the football. They can't score. Uh, they cannot score efficiently. Neither one of these defenses can stop a, a runny nose if they tried to. It, it, it's rough. But give me the team that at least won a Super Bowl more recently than the Buccaneers did, and I'll take the Rams in this game. Just because I am here for the Tom Brady fall apart and the the meltdown of what Tom Brady was. You don't feel bad Rams. for Tom Brady? Come on. I, why, I, I'm, a Jet I? Fan. Wait, wait. I'm a Jet <laughs> fan. I can't stand the SOB, okay? But for, for him to give up his marriage, his, his family – to come back and play football, to try to win another one, and, and try to help his team out. I mean, it's it's sad, man. I feel bad for him. I do. I do feel bad for him. That's that's called bad self-scouting. Understand what you are <laughs> as a person and understand that you have a supermodel wife and three kids at home and you've already proved everything. Like, what else do you need to prove? Go home and love on your wife and have fun with your kids. I'm here for the Tom Brady meltdown. That's my hot take. We're good, we're and I hope that the Rams. I hope the Rams blow – the, the Buccaneers out. I'm not going to call that 16, 13 Rams. Sorry, <laughs> we got a we got a we got a Broncos guy, a Dolphins guy, and a Jets guy, and uh, the Jets one is the one least hoping for the Tom Brady meltdown. <laughs> Go ahead, Clay. What do you got? Rams, Bucks. Oh, Do we lose him? Clay, you can hear us? Do we lose him? Oh, you got me. Oh, there yeah, we are. There, there, there we are, go. Clay. Sorry. Oh, we're, we're just talking about Rams and Rams of the Bucks. We're just talking about yeah, all so these I'm, guys I'm, are going for the Tom Brady belt down here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be the uh, lone wolf, I think, maybe, and I'm going to take Tom Brady in the in the Bucks only because I trust him more than I trust Matthew Stafford, and that's really it. <laughs> 
I got the Rams in this game. I, I, I want the Rams to win this game. Not because of Tom Brady, because I think they're a lot better than the Buccaneers. And Todd Bowles is going to be fired at the end of the year. This team is an absolute wreck. Uh, Bruce Arians will be screaming on the sidelines again, but not a part of the Buccaneers. You'll, you'll probably see him because it's in Tampa. So give me the Rams uh, 24-20. All right, Sunday Night Football, the Titans at the Chiefs. I think this is going to be a blowout. I, th- this is the first time I can actually trust the Chiefs to actually stop Derrick Henry, the run defense. And you even called this, Lance, when you were talking about George Karloftis uh, on our draft panel, too. The, 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 yeah. This has been the yeah. biggest issue for the Chiefs in a while. And they're actually really doing really well stopping the run this year. I give them a lot of credit. The Titans have not been able to get a consistent passing attack. So I'm going to take the Chiefs in this one, 34-20 to 20 blowout here. So can I can I give two score predictions here? Go because ahead. Let's hear. Like, uh, Let's hear. Uh, like Ryan Ryan Tannehill p- could potentially play. <laughs> um, if Ryan Tannehill plays, thirty eight to ten. If Ryan Tannehill doesn't play, thirty eight to three. This game this game is done and over with. We don't have to play it. Like it, it, it's a shame that we cannot flex this game out and at least get Bucks and Rams into it so we can watch a more competitive game. In my opinion. Uh, it doesn't matter. The, the the Chiefs right now are the third best roster in the NFL, and uh, the way that they're playing offensively is unstoppable. The Titans' defense uh, against the pass is terrible, and you can only lean on Derrick Henry so much. So, yeah, give me give me the uh, the Chiefs here in a massive blowout win, thirty eight to ten. Honestly, you should flex the Vikings uh, Commanders game to prime time. Have all the storylines from during the week with the with the Commanders. Oh, hell, hell, give, give me Raiders Jaguars. <laughs> more entertaining. All right, Clay. Sunday night Titans Chiefs. What do you got? There is not a single reason to pick Tennessee in this game. I will not pick Tennessee in this game. I think Kansas City will win it maybe by a hundred, which means nice. Tennessee is probably going to find a way to win this game and make us all look like. They have a good track record against the Chiefs in the regular season. It's weird, but yeah, oh, it's hard man. to trust. Oh, I I mean everybody's got the Chiefs, so maybe I should take the other team. I, I don't know. I, I I think the Chiefs are going to win. They're playing at home. Sunday night football. It's supposed to be a pretty cold night over there, which benefits what the Chiefs. Uh, I believe, Kadarius, Tony, you're going to see a new superstar over there in Kansas City. I believe Kadarius, Tony, is going to see the ball quite a few times, and I expect at least one touchdown by him. Give me the Chiefs in this game. I think it will be a blowout. I think I think they're going to have problems stopping Derrick Henry, but even if Derrick Henry is unstoppable, that's all they have. Um, Yeah, Chiefs, 30, 10, something like that. Monday Night Football, final game, the Ravens at the Saints. This is going to be a fun game, by the way. Ironically, they actually played, the last time they played in New Orleans, they actually played on Monday Night as well. This is going to be a really good game. I'm telling you guys right now. This will be Yeah, this this is going to be a close game. They have two very, very similarly built teams. Both these teams have had their issues in the fourth quarter this season. I'm going to take the Ravens in a close one just because I do trust their interior run defense and not have Alvin Kamara have the game he had last week. And with no, with now Michael Thomas out for the season, Chris Olave being really their you only. You also forgot about Roquan Smither. Yes. You know? I was going to get His to him first in a bit. Game back. And Roquan Smith, I think, will be the guy that will be able to shadow around Taysom Hill if he does anything at his shenanigans. Because that would be the best thing the Saints could expose. But I don't know if I necessarily trust it on a consistent basis now with Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen to be able to do that. So I think the Ravens win a close one here. I'm going to say 23 to 17. When in doubt, take the best quarterback. And the best quarterback on the field is Lamar Jackson here. And if, if you're trying to stop him running against, uh, running against that Saints defense, you're just not going to be able to do it. Like, they, they get so creative with that running game. He's going to throw the ball all over the yard, except for when he targets Marshawn Lattimore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a close game. It is going to be a close game because I, I don't like this uh, – the Saints secondary very much, or the, uh, the the Baltimore Ravens secondary. No, I don't right like now. it either. They're, they're 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 not playing at a high level. They, like when everyone came into the season with Marcus Peters, when they had uh, Marlon Humphrey, Kyle Hamilton, uh, Chris Clark, like all those guys that are out there, they're not playing very well right now. And I think that Andy Dalton, with the way that he's playing right now, there's going to be some deep shots available, and they're going to be able to, to keep this game close. Uh, give me the Ravens. Just because of the the Lamar Jackson uh, factor, uh, let's call it 23-20 Ravens. All right, Clay, Monday night, Ravens at the Saints. So here's a name to remember for that game, Rashid Shahid. He's a guy that the Saints gave a ton of money in the offseason as an undrafted free agent. I think he may have actually set the record for for most money in the signing bonus for (laughs) 
an undrafted free agent, and he's a speedster. He came off uh, IR a few weeks ago, and he's just made plays every game that he's played in. And I think he's going to make a, a big difference in this game. And, and one more thing, guys. I think going back, if you go back to before the season, I felt the Saints had as much talent as anybody in that division. I think they felt the same way. Dalton has the offense finally hitting a rhythm, and I think they sniff that NFC South is up for grabs on a Monday night in New Orleans. This is a must-win game for them. If they want to win the division, they're going to find a way to pull it off. I love the Ravens in this game. I, I do, and I – I think it has a lot. Now, D.K. Dobbins is out for, for a significant amount of time. It's killing me inside because I drafted him on, on practically every single fantasy You're league. fine. You have Chubb Henry and Kenneth Walker. It doesn't matter. I, I wanted D.K. Dobbins to play very well this year, and he can't stay healthy. Uh, it's a huge problem. I, I don't know uh, where they go. They're, they're a run-first team, and they like to use their running back. So now they're, they're, they're looked to be a throw-first team. Uh, I, my question is, is who is he throwing to? But nevertheless, I think they're better in the trenches. I think they have the better offensive line. I think they have the better defensive line. Not the better secondary, because I, I do believe the Saints have the better secondary. Uh, with Lattimore and, and the the safeties that they have over there. So uh, Marcus May and all that <laughs> crap over there. But anyways, I, I think the Ravens will win this game. It will be close, and I, I agree with Clay. Uh, they have... The the talent over there with the Saints, they have the talent. I just I question their quarterback play. I, I Andy Dalton, they they've had how many different quarterbacks since Drew Brees? What three, four? I mean, they, they don't know who their quarterback is going to be. If I were them, I'd just lose this year and draft one of those top quarterbacks in the top ten and and get this over with and and rebuild rebuild that way. They need to do something because. They cannot depend on the crap that they have over there with Taysom and Hale and that garbage. So uh, give me the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe Lamar Jackson goes there. That would be nice. Uh, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens win 17-10.